Hey there, it is Wednesday afternoon, September 28, 2016, and we're going to discuss tropical, newly formed tropical storm Matthew, which is sitting right here on your screen over the Lesser Antilles. It jumped right from being an open wave to being a 60-mile-an-hour tropical storm when the National Hurricane Center designated it uh, just a few hours ago. And uh, we're going to talk about where it's going to go and some differences between the two main models, mainly the American model and the European model, the, the solutions they're showing, and why they are so different. So here it is now, uh, looking pretty healthy for an early on storm. It's going to get even even healthier as time goes on. But uh, let's let's quickly jump into the two solutions that the main models uh, are showing first the GFS model. This was the run here at 12Z a, a few hours ago. It's got the storm right over here over the Lesser Antilles. Pretty weak right now, just getting going. And we're going to play this forward out to about five days. It runs westward through the Caribbean, south of Hispaniola. Begins to intensify uh, over the weekend as it as it heads into some more favorable conditions. Not ideal conditions, but certainly more favorable conditions than it's been in east of the Caribbean. And by the time we get out to Wednesday, it is turned north and is somewhere along, on this particular run, it's on the eastern tip of Cuba. Some runs it's been over Haiti and western Hispaniola. Uh, some runs it's tried to split the gap. This one came pretty close to splitting the gap. But in general, you have a storm coming to the west and turning north at day five. The European model. Going to be very, very similar. Uh, again, this will, this will jump a little bit more because it has 24-hour frames instead of six-hour frames. It's not, it's not as many frames publicly available uh, with the European model, so it will jump a little bit faster. But same general idea through five days. It has the, the storm Matthew starting here in Lesser Antilles, and now we'll play it forward in 24-hour loops. It begins to intensify over the Caribbean, Central Caribbean, and then turns north. And here it is at day five, a very, very powerful 963 millibar storm south and west of the GFS. So there are differences at day five. Mainly the Euro has this west-southwest jog and then turns it before it turns north, which allows it to stay in the Caribbean longer. But in general, the idea is the same. You're going to have a developing hurricane drop. It will be tropical storm will become a hurricane in this general region around day five. Now, it might be back down still in the Caribbean towards Jamaica. It might already be into the southern Bahamas. It might be in the process of making that split uh, between Haiti and Cuba at this point. But in general, you're going to have a you're going to have a significant system somewhere in this area around day five. That we can be pretty confident on. From there, we see very, very different solutions. So going back to the GFS, let's show where it went from here. And this is as we go in the long range, very, very uncertain. So do not take any run verbatim. But what it showed today at 12Z was a rapidly intensifying hurricane as it exited the exited the Bahamas, heading almost due north until it got just off of the Delmarva Peninsula here. And this would just be a major, major event. Uh, huge wind field, 938 millibar low, heading north, throwing tremendous amounts of water back into the north, into the into the coastlines here in the northeast. The good news is that it does turn northeast and just misses New England on this particular run. But this is so far, this this can change many runs. And even if, and even verbatim, just Google uh, Jersey Shore 1944 Great Atlantic Hurricane, and you can see how much damage a storm in this position can do, even if it doesn't make landfall if it was this strong. But thankfully, this is nine days out, so not necessarily set in stone. Now. The euro does something very, very different if we play it forward. Again, 24-hour frame, so it's going to jump a little faster. And it brings it out slow in the GFS, but still brings it out into the Bahamas. But then it just kind of sits there and becomes a – it still rapidly intensifies. This would be a high-end Cat 4, close to Cat 5 hurricane here. But it doesn't really move it. Remember, the GFS by day 10 is all the way up here in Atlantic Canada. The euro – just keeps in one spot. So what you want to say is now, okay, why is there such differences? Well, let's take a look at two key features here. And these are the features you want to watch in future model runs that are going to determine where this goes. So this is the GFS at day five. Excuse me. This is the Euro at day five. This is the GFS at day five. Overall, pretty good. Pretty good, pr pretty good agreement. Not not perfect agreement, but not but for day five, 
not bad. Both have the hurricane down here in the Caribbean. Both have big ridges out over here. And both have a trough coming into the West United States. So again, here's the GFS. You can look at those features here and now compare them on the European. And these two features are pretty similar. The hurricane is further south and slower on the euro as we highlighted. But as we're going to go forward here, I want to watch two features when I play this in motion. First of all, we're going to play on the euro. Watch this feature right in here on the euro. This is a leftover upper level low on the euro. And as we play it forward, it intensifies that upper level low and just has it sit south of off the coast of Jersey and then south of New England. And what that does, that blocks this area off and will prevent this hurricane from shooting northward. The, the hurricane cannot shoot northward and fill this spot. So what you end up with is a storm that doesn't really have anywhere to go because this this uh, 588 millibar ridge is blocking this area over here. So it just kind of sits and spins. That's why you get that solution on the euro. The other now, if you play the GFS, you see the, the at day five, the remnants of the upper level low is still here, but it's going to just kind of disappear. If you look at it, it does try to come off New England, but it, it kind of gets fused into this and just shreds apart. And by the time you end up, uh, and by the time you end up at day eight right here the ridge is completely taken over the upper level low is gone and the hurricane is now shooting straight north go booking for that opening so that that's that's one major difference to watch beyond day five is what happens with that upper level low but if we go back to day five i want to point out one other difference and it's a place that not many people are going to look because most everybody wants to concentrate on what's happening over here in the east coast and in the caribbean but there's something very, very interesting that happens back over the Western United States that's going to have a big impact here. And that has to do with this trough over here. If we look at the GFS, when we're back on, this is the GFS now. If we play the GFS forward, you can see this ridge spills toward the Southern Plain states and actually almost connects, these blue colors almost connect with the with the system back over here in the Gulf, but keeps uh, general troughiness, not a lot of ridging, more, more no red colors in this area. And what it ends up with, you end up with a very, very deep trough that swings around here. And by the time you get out to day nine, you have a full-blown trough ready to go negatively tilted. And, uh, and if this trough is here and the storm is a little bit slower or this is a little bit faster, they could phase and create an unbelievably huge storm if that would happen. But in general, you have this trough digging down. The euro has something very, very different. I'm going back to day five. Here's the trough coming in. But watch what happens when we play it forward. It starts to dig in. It looks like it's going to be like the GFS. But then what starts to happen is it starts to lift north. You notice the, the axis of the trough here in Wyoming, it then starts lifting up towards North Dakota. It leaves this southern area open a little bit. And right here between day seven and eight, you're going to see something very significant. Uh, yeah, between day seven and eight, you're going to see something very significant right there. See it? Seven, day seven, day eight. Look what happens there. Watch Arkansas, Tennessee, northern Mississippi. You see the ridge build, the red colors fill in. The ridge tries to build back to the west on the euro between day seven and eight. And this is very, very important because when you have a ridge building west of the storm, it's going to block this pattern. It's going to block this path off. So this is the other reason why the, the we know from what we just talked about, the euro doesn't, doesn't go north because this upper level low is blocking it. But the hurricane also can't go back to the west toward Florida because as we play this forward, this ridge builds. So if you go, so once you end up with this, this little subtle difference, let me go back to day eight here. So this is now day eight, GFS, day eight euro. You can see this little subtle difference where in the GFS, you have this big trough still coming in over Texas and swinging east. On the euro, not so. You have this ridge starts to build back west. And both models then amplify each feature from there. The euro going forward builds the ridge out to day 10 there. And the GFS swings the trough through from there through day 10. And that's where you end up with totally different solutions. The, the, the strength of that trough that comes in, this one that's way back over here that's coming in back uh, around day five, this is going to determine a lot of what goes on because depending on whether there's a ridge over here 
or a trough over here when this storm is somewhere in this area, assuming it does make this turn and ends up in the Bahamas. That is going to totally change the outcome of where this finally ends up. And that's why we can't know right now what is going to happen. But there are a lot of scenarios on the board. It's an absolutely fascinating setup. And there are huge, huge consequences if we get certain things to set up. So those are the two features to watch. The upper level low, what do the models do with that, and how far south and east can this trough end up swinging across the country before a ridge tries to build back in. That's all for now. Those are the features to keep an eye on. Got a long week ahead.